Welcome inside UD Arena on the campus of the University of Dayton for ESPNU College Basketball presented by City. Tonight, the Xavier Musketeers take on the Dayton Flyers in this important A-10 conference matchup, all a part of Judgment Week presented by Cisco. As we take a look at the top eight teams in the Atlantic 10 Conference, a lot is on the line tonight for Xavier. The Musketeers come in tonight's game tied for first place with UMass at 10-3. And, and a win tonight against the Flyers could put them in great position to win the regular season 8-10 title. And good evening to you. I'm Anthony Calhoun along with Mark Adams. And Mark, this by far is one of the best rivalries in college basketball. Xavier against Dayton. Let's talk first about Xavier. They come in riding a five-game winning streak and all begins with Justin Goldman. Uh, Justin Goldman is just a great all-around basketball player. He can defend because he gets out of the passing lanes and he anticipates passes. And when Justin Goldman is on, he is on very good. He finishes on the break and also defensively, he can block shots as well. Offensively, I love his work in the paint and let the big fella let it fly from downtown. Justin Goldman, the real deal. Well, the Flyers are tough to beat here at home. They are 14-1 this season here at home and it all starts with Brian Roberts he comes in averaging 18.5 points a game second in conference play Brian Roberts they call him B Rob in the Miami Valley and for the Dayton Flyers to be victorious today B Rob must be good he will rain threes down from everywhere in the UD arena he measures the defender and tickles the twine from downtown Brian Roberts the number two scorer will be the man for the Dayton Flyers today well partner are you ready I'm ready let's it go it should be a lot of fun the rivalry continues Dayton against Xavier next right here on Judgment Week defense this was a battle in Cincinnati that came down to the second half. Very closely contested with Dayton with the lead in the first half, but Xavier pulled away in the second half down in Cincinnati. Redding Cole working inside. Can't get the roll. Rebound by Hillsman. Here come the Flyers. You know, Anthony, of course, Monty Scott, the number two scorer, second leading rebounder for the Dayton Flyers. Injured, out for the season with a knee injury. Oh, what a pass from Roberts. To Charles Little for the dunk. Dayton wants to come out and create energy in this wild and raucous arena. Brian Gregory right away goes for the jugular with the backdoor lob on the very first possession. Goldman back over to Lavender. The side of Dolman with the double team. Dolman turnaround jumper. Little short. And Charles Little really held his ground well against Justin Goldman. Oh, what a move. London Warren with the basket. They call him the Jacksonville Jet. And there's another Jet right there in Drew Lavender. The Dayton Flyers want to create energy. So they set up the backdoor lob. There goes Charles Little. And Brian Roberts actually shoots the ball right to the basket. And London Warren. He explodes the basket. He gives them a 94-foot dimension, just like Drew Lavender gives Xavier that same 94-foot threat. Drew Lavender at the line. And the first one's good. And the head coach for Dayton, Brian Gregory, 40-year-old, fourth season, 72 and 47 overall with the Flyers. And the second one's good. Uh, two of the really fine young coaches in the country, and Sean yeah. Miller and Brian Gregory both have a tremendous coaching pedigree. We'll talk about that this afternoon as we move through the game. Roberts, their go-to guy. Finding Little, layup, no good. Is ever back the other way. Lavender, downtown, he got it. Drew Lavender leads the conference when it comes to three-point shooting, shooting over 57% from behind the arc. Well, Drew Lavender dropped 22 points on Rhode Island earlier this week. Drew Lavender is playing at his highest level since the time he transferred two years ago. Talk about the rivalry. They're so similar. You take a look at here, the close rivalry schools, 46.5 miles apart. Well, and also the Jesuit priest started Xavier and the Marianists started Dayton. While they have a healthy dose of respect for each other, Anthony, Marianists and Jesuits really don't like each other all that much. <laughs> and this rivalry shows that. Yeah. 
One thing great about this Xavier team, we, we got a chance to talk to uh, Coach Miller today. He says he loves the fact that this team is so experienced. We've seen that in the last couple of games with these guys. Right? Well, these seniors are like racehorses who are smelling the barn right now. Justin Goldman, Justin Cage are two seniors that have shown a lot of leadership. Brandon Cole also gives a defensive presence that Xavier did not have earlier in the yeah. season. Since Brandon Cole came in the starting lineup, this team's a much better defensive basketball team. Seven on the shot clock. Burrell driving, spin move, nowhere to go. And Dolman can't answer, but Cole underneath the rebound, and it's good. And that's where Brandon Cole makes such a difference. He's willing to do the dirty work, 61% from the field. Another turnover there by Date. Xavier on a 7-0 run since trailing early in this game. And Anthony, that's where Brian Gregory really has to be careful watching this game because Xavier can explode offensively. They've got five guys that average double figures, and they've got five guys who can hurt you. It's a pick-your-poison type of team offensively. Yeah, Burrell inside. And it's going to go Dayton's way. Uh, both these teams really getting after the loose balls. There's London Warren right there throwing the ball off of Brandon Cole. And London Warren brings energy to this basketball team. He's like a whirling dervish. He just plays hard. And they're going to get him for steps. How critical is it for Brian Roberts to really take control of this game early on? I think ultimately critical because he is the leader on the floor. There are no seniors in the date lineup now with Monty Scott out for the season. And so Brian Roberts is a junior. He's played a lot of big games, averaging 18 and a half points a game. And Charles Little also needs to come up big. Drew Lavender, at the top of the key, pulls up with the three, and hey, not, no problem. I'll, I'll try the three, not bad. You know, Drew Lavender has played in attack mode over the last, really, half of this basketball season. He plays for a great point guard and, and former point guard and Sean Miller, and Drew Lavender is playing extremely well. Xavier up by six. It's biggest lead of the game. Little. Jumper, no good. Burrell driving, in trouble, Cage for three, yeah, not bad, it's good. And you're under 16, and Brian Gregory will use a timeout anyway, even though the media timeout would have come up on the next dead ball. So he's got to call a timeout. Xavier is on a 13-0 run. They're up 13-4. We're back after this. We are back here at UD Arena where Xavier is leading 13 to 4. They're on a 13 0 run mark. And they've done it really by sharing the basketball, playing tough defense on the man to man. And Justin Goldman defensively has really dominated inside, challenging every shot. Charles Little has not been able to get it going because of the defense of Justin Goldman. Little with his own rebound, he puts it back in, counting a foul. So Charles Little will go to the line to shoot, but it's been all Xavier early on here in Dayton. We're back up. He has been used. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by City. Real rewards, real fast. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts at Dick's. We're back here in Dayton where Xavier's up 13 to 6. And Mark the Musketeers off to a fast start here against the Flyers. Well, very veteran basketball team who has taken care of the ball. Drew Lavender has made shots defensively that have been very stingy. And so far, this sellout crowd of over 13,000 maniacs for the Dayton Flyers yeah. really have not been able to get into this basketball game. Talk about the rivalries in college basketball. This by far one of the best rivalries going, wouldn't you say? Well, you're talking to a guy that went to Xavier's basketball camp as a kid and followed the Jayden Flyers as well when they were making their great runs through the NCAA tournament in the late 1960s. So in this part of the country, there's no rivalry bigger than Dayton Xavier. In fact, my son is a graduate of Xavier <laughs> University. A 
Drew Lavender just seems to have a, a control of this offense. He's a guy that has melded. Early on, Lavender and Burrell, I think, had a difficult time playing together, but they've been able to share the ball and get into a rhythm. There's Stanley Burrell right there. Pulls up with the three, and he is money. They are getting the job done behind the arc tonight. And that's a junior that's played a lot of minutes, matched up against the freshman, Marcus Johnson, who played at Akron St. Vincent St. Mary. Part of his career played with LeBron James. Stanley Burrell out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Good score, Ben Davis. Little trying to answer, though, in the lane and gets the wall to go. And that's a good look right there. Charles Little, so athletic. He climbs the ladder, shoots over the defender. That's his athleticism to his unfair advantage. Xavier known for a team that is very balanced. Four players coming in tonight's game in double figures. That's why they're hard to guard, because you take away one option like a Justin Dolman, he's willing to distribute it just like that to a wide open just in case they share the ball well. Look on the Flyers, Roberts. They're Dayton trying to play a little inside out basketball. They're trying to get Norman Plummer with Brandon Cole down low. Now they're going to call an offensive foul on Norman Plummer. And the injuries for the Dayton Flyers with Monty Scott, 10 points, 4.4 rebounds, 48%. He's the second go-to guy for the Dayton Flyers, now out with a serious knee injury from just one week ago. The Flyers really miss Monty Scott. You can see it offensively. Yeah, you can. Three-year starter, had successful knee surgery on Thursday. Of course, he hopes to hopefully one day play at another level and get back on the basketball court. Look at the turnover situation. Dayton four, Xavier one. Xavier, a team that does a great job with protecting the ball, but besides that point right there, there's Johnson landing in. No, but the follow by Charles Little. And here come the crowd. 16-11, Xavier on top. Charles Little does anything but play Little. He plays huge. He gets to the rack. He assumes every shot is a pass to him in the open court. Lavender from way deep, and it's good. Drew Lavender. And the defender went behind the screen. That left Drew Lavender wide open. You can't go behind the screen against Drew Lavender. Drew Lavender, three for three behind the arc. And Charles Little looking, hustling down the court. Marcus Johnson goes up. Everybody else looks like little people. And Charles Little looks like a big person. Take a look at this shot selection here. One of four. And then you look at three-point range. Five of six. Getting the job done. And it comes to behind the arc. Charles Little, the one part of the game where he really struggles is at the free throw line. He's very good at finishing around the basket, but a guy that's been a subpar free throw shooter throughout his career here at Dayton. 27 of Dayton's 46 dunks by Charles Little. Now, think about this. Butler, who has been ranked in the top 15 yeah. all year long, got their first dunk in the 13th game of the season. How much does athleticism really matter? Exactly. It's not very much. It still counts for two. Charles Little, he'll take a break. Well done, though. Leading the way here for the Flyers. Down by seven. About 13 minutes left to play here in the first half here in Dayton. And Xavier settling for the long jump shots right there as Josh Duncan comes into the basketball game. But Dayton really needs to get the ball inside. They've got to get a post present down to Hillsman, play a little inside out with, with Brian Roberts. Sandoval, top of the key, almost turns it over. Well, look at that ball hawking defense by Xavier. Yeah, they got 11 on the shot clock now. Roberts, and they're going to get a foul on Raymond. Well, lace up your skates Saturday night and Sunday afternoon for college hockey on ESPNU. First Saturday at 8 Eastern, the Clarkson and Golden Knights face the Quinnipiac Bobcats. Then Saturday at 3 Eastern, Massachusetts Minutemen take on the Northeastern Huskies. Hockey on ESPNU Saturday and Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Clarkson's number six in the country got upset yeah. this week. 
Why do you know so much about that school? Hey, listen, you got to be prepared for these broadcasts. These <laughs> Always doing your homework, my friend. <laughs> Always do your homework. Johnny Wolf in the game for Xavier. Xavier gets so many deflections. They play with their hands out in passing lanes. They anticipate passes. Again, it's a, there's an experience factor there. Little drives, and he'll go to line, and he'll shoot two. Let's talk about Xavier's defense, though, because they seem like they are really causing problems for the Flyers trying to get, get inside for the basket. Well, Charles Little right there able to split a seam right there. For Dayton to be successful, they've got to move the ball from side to side to make that defense work from help side to ball side then expose gaps. If you just play off the dribble against Xavier, they're going to get tips, they're going to get steals, and they will beat you by 25 points or more, which they have done in their five-game winning streak, averaging over 25.8 point winning margin over the five-game winning streak for Xavier. Well, Charles Little knew he had to step up when Monty Scott was done for the season. 44 points in the last two games for the Flyers. So now they're down by five, 19 of 14. And Xavier very patient trying to get the ball down low. And there's another tip there by Norman Plummer. Little with the steal all the way to the hoop. No good. Rebound by Duncan. And Xavier really seems to be intimidating Dayton inside right now. Other than Charles Little, everybody else had a difficult time shooting over the taller Xavier defenders. Oh, I love that effort. Yeah. London Warren. We've got a timeout, but you talk about the effort. Xavier getting the job done, leading by five. The Flyers, 19 to 14. Anthony Calhoun along with Mark Adams. So glad you're with us here on ESPNU. And before the game, Mark, talk about school spirit. They have it here at Dayton, right? A Pi Appa Cal for the International Fraternity decided that they wanted to bring the basketball all the way from Xavier University in Cincinnati to Dayton and deliver the game ball to promote funds and awareness for the Cancer Protection Institute and also the Marianist Mission Project. And there you see the ball being delivered, and 50 fraternity brothers were able to come from Cincinnati to Dayton, 46.5 miles, $8,000 were raised and donated for cancer prevention and also third world habitats that are part of the Merriam's mission here at the University of Dayton. That's great stuff. Always good to get back. And I think it all starts from the top with Brian Gregory. What a great guy he is. Well, he's very involved in this community with an organization called Secret Smiles that provides beds and bedding yeah. for needy children and mothers. And he's really a guy that has embraced this community, and they have embraced him as well. Charles Little, 12 of 14 points, 12 of the 14 points by Dayton. Wolf with three, and here comes Dayton again. Well, Charles Little right now is the best player on the court. He needs some help from everybody else in the white jersey, but if you're Dayton, I keep going to the well giving Charles Little the yeah. basketball. Andre Sandoval. Down the ball screen for London Warren. Down to five in the shot clock. Benny, he's got to take a shot. And that's where Jimmy Benny really gets lost. He's more of a three-point shooting threat. You can see he's not very comfortable when he puts the ball on the floor and gets stuck in the paint. Have not heard from Dolman yet, but now he answers. Right over Kurt that's Hillsman, the, ball, the freshman, the senior challenging the freshman. The senior wins that duel. And tonight, Charles Little, 12 points. Rest of the team, only two. He's making the difference, keeping the Flyers in. And speaking of Little inside, no. Gets his own rebound, puts it back, no good. And Cage comes up with a rebound for Xavier. Well, the taller defenders for Xavier are building the fence around the basket. And Dayton, not quite big enough to finish in that area. And we're going to get a foul on Sandoval. Five fouls on Andre Sandoval, his first team's third for the Flyers, Brian Roberts and Marcus Johnson. For Andre Sandoval and Jimmy Benny. 
Mark, Dayton started off very slow in this game, but if you look at this game, it seems like they're starting to make their way back into the game. Well, because Charles Little has led the way, we still really have not heard from Brian Roberts, and he is such a focal point defensively, yeah. as Stanley Burrell is a, is a dynamic scorer. When Stanley Burrell gets it going, he's the best scorer in the Atlantic 10 in spurts. Speaking of Stanley Burrell, the answer there. Roberts quiet, just like Dolman. We saw Dolman get his first two points moments ago. We'll see if Roberts can answer. Xavier fouls on Justin Cage, his first to team fifth. Well, Drew Lavender right there at about 5-6 on a really good day. He's the guy that's been guarding Brian Roberts, and Roberts has a decided size advantage in that possession. Now they switch back to Justin Cage on Brian Roberts. That's a much better matchup for Xavier. So Charles Little, he'll go to the sidelines. Making things happen for the Flyers here in the first half. 21-14, 9.32 left to play here in the first half. Boy, Justin Cage just all over Brian Roberts. Wherever he goes, Justin Cage is next to him. And that's great defense there by Xavier. We've got a very special guest here in the house tonight. That is Rita Weisenbach. She's 92 years old. She's the queen of flyer feedback. And Anthony, I've hosted a radio show on college basketball in Dayton, Ohio for 10 years. And Rita has been my first caller every single show. Get out Cal of here. Lipkin Are you serious? nothing on Rita Weisenbach. <laughs> Happy birthday to her. That's fantastic. You know, I've been in some great places for college basketball. That's a big three by Roberts. But I tell you what, partner, this atmosphere is amazing here in Dayton. The Flyer fanatics here, really, they get it. They understand college basketball. Even when this team won three or four games under Jim O'Brien back in the mid and early 90s, they still averaged over 12,000 fans a night for a team that won less than the number of fingers on your hand. Lavender. Already hitting three three-pointers early on this game. Burrell drives, nowhere to go, and we've got an offensive foul. And Jason Love. We are at UD Arena on the campus of the University of Dayton where the Flyers are hosting the Xavier Musketeers. Anthony Calhoun alongside Mark Adams. So glad to have you with us here on ESPNU. What's at stake? Well, Xavier 10 and 3 tied for first place in the A-10 with UMass. As for Dayton, they are 14 and 1 at home this season. They are tough to beat here in Dayton. Well, in Dayton also in eighth place right now in the Atlantic 10 Conference. And you really want to be somewhere between third and sixth because you want to avoid playing UMass or Xavier in the quarterfinals if you can. Brian Roberts is just going to take Justin Cage off the dribble. That's what he should do. He's got a little quickness advantage right now. Put the ball on the floor, go to the rack. Five straight points down by Roberts. Dayton down by two, and here comes the crowd. Side. Take a look at the points in the paint. Dayton 10, Xavier 2. Chance now for Dayton to take the lead or tie, and they tie it up. And Norman Plummer, by blocking off, set a screen and gave a wide open avenue for Marcus Johnson. Dayton on a 7-0 run. Look at the pressure here, and we've got a foul. Talk about fired up. I think the folks here are Xavier Dayton. We're tied at 21. 34 remaining in the first half. Anthony, we've pretty much gotten what we've expected. Xavier came out, tried to deliver the knockout blow early on, but Dayton rallied by this crowd with Charles Little leading the way, and now Brian Roberts starting to heat up. We've got a basketball game. Take a look at the stat track. Field goals even up at 47%. And three-point field goals. Xavier 5 of 8, Dayton 1 of 2. And points in the paint. Dayton 12, Xavier 2. You know, for Dayton to be successful, they've got to get the ball down low to a Charles Little and Norman Plummer play a little bit of inside out. And that's a turnover there by Dolman. 
and the Dayton Flyers got back in because Brian Roberts started measuring over Justin Cage. Takes him off the dribble right there. First to three, then uses quickness. And then Marcus Johnson in the open cut with the delivery of the deuce. And Dayton back in this basketball game. They can take a lead if they can make this here underneath. And they got an offensive foul here on Norman Plummer. Dayton, a chance to take the lead. The last time they led, Mark, was 18-46 in the first half. But I like the fact that Dayton is getting the ball inside. Norman Plummer right there lowered his shoulder. He's very physical around the basket. He'll take a blow right now. There you see Brian Gregory. One of the interesting things about Brian Gregory, he doesn't just coach players. He invests in players, and I think his time is so critical that he invests in these players, and you can say that about both these staffs. I've watched them both closely for many years. Sean Miller, the graduation-rated Xavier, and the graduation-rated Day Dayton are two of the higher grad rates in the Atlantic 10 and in the country. How important is it for Xavier to get Dolman in action right now? You know, I'm really surprised that Xavier has not done a little better job of getting Dolman down on the block and letting him go to war a little bit down there as well. Dolman trying the three. Hillsman with the rebound. Roberts has had the hot hand for the Flyers. Matched up against Lavin. And that is a size advantage for Brian Roberts. Little to the basket. Count of the foul. simple game for the Dayton Flyers. Brian Roberts and Charles Little. There's Roberts setting the screen. Little going with the penetration. He's a poor man's Adrian Danley. Look at the wide <laughs> shoulders. He just gets a little bump on yeah. the shoulder. That's not enough to keep Charles Little from getting it to the rack. Where'd you pull that one out of? That was a hey, great call. I love Adrian Danley. He's built just like him. About yeah. the same size. You're, you're exactly right. Just doesn't shoot free throws quite as well as Danley. Dayton's first lead since 4-0 at 1846. Lavender with the jumper, and he gets it to go. We're all tied up at 23 apiece. Well, Drew Lavender is just so quick to transfer from Oklahoma, played for Kelvin Sampson, decided he'd fit in better at Xavier, and frankly, he does because he gets up and down. You know, they say there's nothing like the relationship between a head coach and a point guard, and Lavender has been key for Xavier in their five-game winning streak. Well, a lot of time it's a, a love-hate relationship because former point guards who also coach expect a lot out of their own point guards. That's right. And Dayton is finding answers from everywhere. Marcus Johnson with the jumper there. Two-point lead for Dayton. Well, Marcus Johnson gets off the side 0 for his last six field goal attempts. He looked awfully confident on that medium-range jump shot. Shot selection, which we talked to Coach Gregory today, was critical for his team. They're 9 of 18, three-point range, 1 of 2. Good pass up of the shot, a good extra pass to your best player, Brian Roberts. And if Roberts would have made that three, this place would have gone crazy. <laughs> Charles Little just selling out for this loose ball. And you can see both these teams, this rivalry is so well understood. I mean, these, these teams are close, they're in the same conference. Yeah, there's a cross-town shootout between Xavier and Cincinnati, but in Dayton, Ohio, the biggest game of the year is always Xavier. Yeah, we talked to Coach Miller today, and he said that even though his team is riding a five-game winning streak, there's no way they're overlooking this Dayton team at all. Well, they've lost here three consecutive times, and so... This is a, a place that's very difficult to win for the Xavier Musketeers. If you're Brian Gregory, coach, you, you got to love the effort because they are getting the job done now on the offensive end, but also on the defensive end as well. Well, the only way the Dayton Flyers can win this game without Monty Scott is simply by working a lot harder, diving for loose balls, and Sean Miller wants his team to match that intensity today. But this crowd nearly almost needs to carry this Dayton team. This team needs to play better than maybe the current personnel that they have with Monty Scott got out of the lineup. You know, Dayton started the season at 10 and 1. They're 6 and 9 since that point. They knocked off Louisville earlier this year. They beat Creighton. Creighton's one of the fine teams in the Missouri Valley Conference. Dayton's a dangerous team. Jimmy Benning at the line, 6'7, 210. Pound junior forward out of Johnston, Iowa. And 
he gets the second one. Giving Dayton a four-point lead. And here comes full court press. Pressure here by Dayton. A 13-2 run by the Flyers. And Xavier just not able to get the ball inside. And that's been really the, the defensive game plan for Xavier is to take away the post. And they've done it extremely well. Lavender in the corner. Look at all the blue jerseys outside. Finally, Josh Duncan gets open inside. That's what Xavier needs. Establish a post presence. Josh Duncan gets it done. Josh Duncan with the basket there. Dayton really moving the ball well from side to side. And Benny coming up with the steal for Dayton. And Xavier's just out of sync offensively, trying to force some things. Credit the Dayton defense. You know, down in Cincinnati, Dayton really played a, a similar basketball game. They had the lead in the first half. So boy, do we have a game here in Dayton. The Flyers leading Xavier 27-25 at 316. Left to play in the first half. Next Saturday. Back here in Dayton where Xavier is down by two to the Flyers 27-25. Anthony Calhoun along with Mark Adams. Let's go inside the play, establishing a post presence because of the spacing of the Xavier Musketeers. Watch how the Musketeers stay, stay spaced, and Josh Duncan gets free because all defenders have to come out and respect the shooter. They're establishing the post presence on the last possession, which they have lacked for about the last 10 minutes of this basketball game. Jimmy Mitch Benny matched up with Justin Cage down low. A little mismatch there, but Stanley Burrell right in front of the Dayton bench. Stanley Burrell with a three-pointer. Shooting 37% behind the arc. This year for the Musketeers. So Xavier up by one, 28-27. Now look for Brian Roberts in this offensive set. Here he comes on the dribble handoff. Cage playing some tough defense. You know, Justin Cage, he can defend at the NBA level. He's got good enough quicks. He's got really good strength. Sandoval to the hoop, but we got an offensive foul. And Andre Sandoval is just struggling offensively, out of control, coming down the lane. And Xavier, too good of a defensive team. The last five games, Sandoval with nine assists, 12 turnovers from the point guard position, only shooting 28%. He's really made some poor decisions offensively. He needs to get back to his fundamental base and be a distributor first. Turnover situation, Xavier seven, Dayton six. Burrell was hot moments ago up to the hoop. Nice defense by the Flyers. Roberts comes up with it. Flyers running. And Warren turns it over because of the hustle of Justin Cage. Lavender, deep three. It's good. Four of four from behind the arc. And London Warren, a freshman right there, forgot his defensive responsibilities. Drew Lavender has been white hot from yeah. three-point land over the last several ball games. And London Warren just left him alone and dared him to shoot it. And Drew Lavender made him pay. The Musketeers on an 8-0 run. Johnson, no good. There's Lavender. Duncan, he'll take a three. And why not? It's good. Uh, Josh Duncan can really shoot the basketball. He's knocked down six of his last nine from three-point land. Xavier, 8 of 12 from behind the arc. And Xavier's got seven guys who shoot 37% or better from the three-point line. You've got to stretch the defense and get into them. 
one time this season against Charlotte, they hit 16 three pointers. And we've got a foul here on Cage. Coming up at halftime, Florida goes down, plus Big East Clash. And Clemson continues to slide. That's coming up. Sports Center U at halftime with Mike Hall coming up moments from now. Also, Derek Brown for Justin Cage. Well, the other thing, Dayton's done a good job of is getting to the free throw line. Xavier is known as a team that can really get to the line. They've made 510 free throws. While the opponents have only attempted 444, they've made more free throws than their opponents have attempted. But Dayton getting to the line this afternoon. What about that? Roberts just per money the at the line. Shooting 90% from the line. He's first in conference play, ranked eighth nationally, 90% free throw shooter. And the second one. So Xavier up by five. Under a minute left to play here in the first half. Lavender drives. Call with a rebound. And we've got a foul on Robertson. And Coach Brian Gregory not too happy about that call. Well, it looked like Charles Little got all ball right there, but the official is the only opinion that really matters. Here comes the ball, and you know, once Drew Lavender gets in the paint, that gives him an offensive rebounding option. That's Brandon Cole right there. Might have got him on the arm on the way up. Look at Dayton, 10 free throw attempts. Xavier now three free throw attempts with that last one by Brandon Cole. Again, Xavier ball club who has made more free throws than their opponents have attempted and by a large margin. Brandon Cole gets the second one to go. We've got a timeout here. Step behind the arch for three games of college basketball at ESPNU Monday night. First at 7 Eastern, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats face the Delaware State Hornets. Then at 9, the Jackson State Tigers take on the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. And finally at 11 o'clock, the St. Mary's Gales meet the Loyola Marymount Lions. College basketball on ESPNU Monday night. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Good look at Sean Miller. What a tradition the Xavier Musketeers have developed in Cincinnati. I think they're one of the premier programs in the country, especially when you start comparing them to other types of programs. We'll be talking about that as we go through this broadcasting because of guys like Justin Dolman, yeah. some pretty good players and some great coaches at Xavier. Thad Mana comes to mind, as well as Skip Prosser, both former head men at Xavier. Mark 10, 20 win seasons in 11 years. Talk about a tradition at Xavier. They've been able to get the job done over the years. 20, 10 out of the last 11. Usually Brian Gregory, he treats us like a late game situation. Timeout right there to set his team. Brian Roberts will have the basketball in his hands late in the shot clock now at 20 seconds. When Stanley Burrell matched up, And there's the double screen for Roberts. Six on the shot clock. Little drives, jumper. No rebound here by Xavier. And Brown tries a shot. It's no good. But you talk about a crazy, crazy first half. Drew Lavender, 16 points, four for four from behind the arc. Well, Drew Lavender has been the difference here in the first half. Every time Xavier needed a little bit of offensive leadership, Drew Lavender provided it. So we're at halftime. Xavier on top, 36 to 29. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. Team and hope the body dies because Drew Lavender at 16 points is making every shot. Cut down on the number of touches that he gets. And then Brian Roberts and Charles Little, while they're good enough to carry the load, Brian Roberts has to be more assertive offensively. And then there's got to be a third option for Dayton that steps up and finds a way to contribute offensively. A lot on the line for Xavier tonight. Tied for first place in the A-10 with UMass. But of course, both teams trying to get to the NCAA tournament. And that's Dolman with a nice turnaround. Well, Xavier, when they get the ball down low, they are very effective. Brian There's Brian Roberts in the open court right on cue. You know, Xavier is a number 40 RPI. 
Xavier needs to win this basketball game on the road. As you see Charles Little with 14 points, also the leading rebounder with six rebounds. Played himself a great first half. Roberts er, throws up the prayer, and it's no good. And we've got a jump ball situation here. Brandon Cole and Dolman both grabbing the ball, so possession will go over to Dayton. His head coach, Sean Miller, looks on. And Brian Roberts really needs to assert himself offensively. And when Dayton was able to move the ball from side to side, Brian Roberts was able to get into gaps, penetrate, and make plays. Little was hot in the first half. Comes the on-ball screen, the isolation for Brian Roberts. Both defenders jumping out. And almost going to turn over, but Warren comes up with it. But that comes the Musketeers. Lavender, outstanding first half, 16 points. Burrell, three rebounds in the way, and Burrell, four. See you David just pounding the ball inside. Jimmy Benny there with the steal. Good active hands by Jimmy Benny. Look at the pass. Great pass. By London Warren to Kurt Hillsman with the rim rattler. And here comes the crowd to its feet. Xavier up by five. Lavender with a push off. Offensive foul. London Warren brings energy. He also brings the ability to pass the ball in the open court. Look at the look away. The one-handed sweep pass to the big fella, Kurt Hillsman, with the deposit. Look at that vision, court awareness by London Warren. From Jacksonville, Florida, the Jacksonville Jet. They call him that because he's so quick. Points in the paint, look at this. Dayton 20, Xavier 6. That's been the difference in this game. And that's because Justin Dolman sat a lot in the first half, and he's the best low post option for the Xavier Musketeers. Turnover, Xavier seven in the first half, Dayton seven as well, but here we are in the second half, Xavier three and Flyers two. Well, Dayton clearly wants to get the ball in the open court. They clearly want to dominate the paint. They've been able to do that. And that's why they've been able to make this little mini run to open up the second half. Remember, Xavier absolutely dominated Dayton in the second half down in Cincinnati. Burrell from the corner. Look at the rebound by Cage working the boards. No good. And uh, Dayton comes up with it. Roberts. Dayton trying to get back to 500 in the conference now at six and seven. Little with the rebound, puts it back. And here come the Flyers, down by three. The last time these two teams played against each other was on January the 27th. Dayton losing 67-83, but Xavier had five players in double figures. And look at the second half numbers, 41 to 24 in the second half. Sean Miller's team really responded to the challenge. And London Warren getting penetration. Charles Little staying with it as it goes out the foot of Justin Dolman. Sometimes it's better to be lucky. And Little was lucky, but good enough to finish. Lucky works. <laughs> Dayton bringing the pressure. Dolman turnaround jumper. And we got a foul here on Cage. And what has been the issue right now with the Musketeers? Well, the issue right now is that Dayton's come out playing harder to open up the second half. Justin Cage going over the back. Look at the position of Jimmy Benny. Blocks off perfectly, and Cage goes over the back. This is a huge game from a lot of different perspectives. With the new NIT rule, conference champions automatically get a bid to the NIT. Xavier in a position to lock up the first spot in the Atlantic 10 Conference. And Justin Cage is going to have to go to the sideline, picking up his third foul. I'd watch that. 
And of course, your ultimate goal is to go to the NCAA tournament. But you know what? A conference champion, that's a pretty good old consolation prize to have in your hip pocket going into your conference tournament play. Right about that. Burrell, he'll take the three. And a nice rebound there, and the basket's good by Brandon Cole. Well, Brandon Cole's just a workhorse. Last six ball games, last eight ball games, 10 points per game, 61% from the floor. So he's the best rebounder on this team, and he proved it there. Yeah, he gives a good defensive and offensive rebounding post presence in the paint. You know, Dayton with 16 victories, get a signature win over Xavier here. They're in contention also for postseason play. So this is a big, big game for both of these programs. Lavender from downtown. He connects again. And Andre Sandoval will come in now defensively for London Warren. Although London Warren can get it done for you offensively, he's given Drew Lavender look after look after look. A kid that shoots 47% from three. You cannot give Drew Lavender that type of quality touches. Drew Lavender on fire. Five of five from behind the arc tonight. And Anthony, that's why I really think you need to just deny Drew Lavender everywhere on the court. Talk about Drew Lavender just having an impressive night. Five for five behind the arc. He's getting the job done for Xavier here in the second half. Regular season, Xavier is hot right now, but they really need to win this game. They're on the bubble. They have a chance for a conference championship. They certainly could win the conference tournament, but you want to win your regular season first. That gets you to postseason play then the opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. If they win tonight, and they do well in the tournament, the conference tournament, you say they're in at, art, at large? I think based upon the victory over Villanova and Illinois, it would be hard to keep Xavier out of the tournament, especially if they go to the finals. You take a look at February, they've been on fire, undefeated in this month, scoring 84.6 points a game, beating their opponents by 25 plus points a game as well. And the committee looks at those numbers, they look at the streak, they look at the last 10, and Xavier, one of the most impressive teams in the country right now over the last five basketball games. If they finish with a flurry, they can earn their spot in the NCAA tournament if they got to the A-10 Conference Tournament and possibly were beaten. UMass, who's also tied them, has a little bit more work to do, I think. I think Xavier right now is at least positioned, but they've got to deliver coming down the stretch. Roberts turn around. Jumper. Here's Lavender. He's going to stay here with the Musketeers. You mentioned the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament will be held in Atlantic City. The last several years has been in Dayton or Cincinnati. Xavier and Dayton were the recipients of some pretty good home, home cooking. You're right about that. And that's a pretty basket Derek by Derek Brown right here in Dayton, Ohio. From here with the high school just right down the road. Yeah, grew up just a couple blocks from here, shooting 70% from the floor. Derek Brown doesn't miss. Talk about home cooking. They get the job done here, but this place is very special for the sixth year in a row, though, to the first round of the NCAA tournament here. And they average nearly 9,000 fans for teams that really not many people in this area know about 72 NCAA tournament games here. This is quite a venue with a tremendous history since 1969. Doesn't look like it's that old, does it? You know. <laughs> Took you around the arena today. It's Had a great time. Arena. Great time, my friend. Hospitality was excellent. For the folks here, they've got red throughout the place here. They were calling it a red out today. One of the shot clock, they got to get it off, and they're not going to get it off in time. Shot clock violation. All right, so I got to ask you this, Mark. If you're Dayton here, what are you going to have to do to try to get back in this game? If you find yourself down by nine points now, 1350 left to go here in the second half, and Xavier's a very veteran team. They don't give up leads too often. First, you've got to take care of Drew Lavender and take the ball out of his hands. If you don't do that defensively, it doesn't matter anymore. Offensively, Brian Roberts has to be the first team all-conference player that he is. Justin Cage, a great defender, but Brian Roberts has to lead this team with about a 15-point effort 
here in the second half. Charles Little will be your second guy, be the third guy to step up. What's at stake? We talk about this been a huge game tonight. Ten and three tied for first place in the A-10 with UMass. Xavier is and Dayton 14 and one at home. They don't lose here too often here at UD Arena. Well, UMass, the other leader in the conference, came in here and got a road victory, a huge win for UMass, led by Rashawn Freeman. Roberts. Johnson jumper. And Brian Roberts is really a non-offensive offensive threat right now. Credit Xavier's defense. And Xavier hitting from everywhere from downtown. B.J. Raymond with the three-pointer. And Brian Gregory, he doesn't like what he sees. He's going to take a timeout right now, down 12. Xavier, 10 of 16 from behind the arc. They're up big here in Dayton. Next Saturday. We're back here in Dayton where Xavier's on top, 48-36, 13-08 to left to play here in the second half. And Xavier has been impressive over the, the past decade, Mark. Over the last 10 years, and when you talk about teams out of the BCS conferences that have made a statement, Xavier's seven NCAA tournaments. They reached the Elite Eight under Thad Mott in 2004. They were 10-9 and nine at one point during that season. This team has won 67% of their games. And then Gonzaga, another mid that I just love. The Elite Eight and 99 under Dan Munson. Kent State under Stan Heath. What great coaches there. Gary Waters, Stan Heath, Jim Christian to the Elite Eight. Creighton under Dana Altman for 13 seasons. Won 70% of their games in Butler under Thad Mata, who also coached Xavier along with Barry Collier and Todd Licklider to the Sweet 16, losing to Oklahoma. Five great programs, non-BCS. All right, one problem. What's up with George Mason, though? They make it to the Final Four. It's longevity, my friend. <laughs> They're just too young to remember. You know, all those, all those great, those, those great in the last decade. Yeah. But I love Jim Laranega. In fact, got to call yeah. their game against Wichita State last year in Bracket Buster with Jai Lewis and Tony Skin. Yeah. What a wonderful run that was for George Mason. And of course, Dayton was the most successful college basketball program in the 50s and 60s. Yep, better than Kentucky, better than North Carolina. That's right. Of course, the Xavier fans will remind you, though, that Xavier beat Dayton in 1958 for the NIT championship. Xavier with its biggest, biggest lead in the game, up by 10. Oh, that's a nice play there, and the big dunk by Derek Brown. That's 35 dunks out of his 68 made field goal attempts. Well, Xavier, on a, shots are dunks. Xavier on a 12-3 run. Little bringing Dayton back with the basket there. Boy, besides Charles Little, the rest of the Dayton Flyer offense has struggled to get open and make shots. Great ball movement by Xavier. Talk about getting up, Coach. Look at this. All you got to do is throw it in the vicinity of the basket. And this Dayton born and bred young man, Derek Brown, he can flush it. Went to Chaminade Julien just down the road here in Dayton, Ohio. It's a great get for Xavier and a big loss for Dayton to not get Derek Brown. That's right. Decided to head to Xavier, turn down Wake Forest to come play in Cincinnati for Xavier. Well, Chris Wright, another real talent from here in Dayton, Ohio, has signed early with Dayton. That was also a big recruiting war between Xavier and Dayton. Everybody involved for Xavier and Burrell. And we've got a goaltending here, no basket. By Brandon Cole, but it's been all Xavier in the second half. Looking pretty special here. Ending. Or the score is Xavier's leading by 10, 50 to 40 over the Flyers with 11.44 left to play here in the second half. 
set behind the arch for three games of college basketball on ESPNU Monday night. First at 7 Eastern, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats face the Delaware State Hornets. Then at 9, the Jackson State Tigers take on the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. And finally at 11 o'clock, the St. Mary's Gales meet the Loyola Marymount Lions. College basketball on ESPNU Monday night. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. The West Coast Conference a little bit more wide open now with Gonzaga, kind of hitting the wall a little bit. Teams like Lowell, Marymount, and St. Mary's Gales out of Moraga, California. They've got a shot along with Santa Clara as well. Charles Little has been the answer for Dayton in this game. A career high now, ties a career high, I should say, with 23 points in the game right now. And Drew Lavender just working over the defense. Dolman and Cage both back in the game, both with three personal fouls. Down to 10. Dolman for three. Burrell with the big rebound. Lavender way outside. And he misses his first three, and the crowd goes crazy. The guy's been on fire, but he, he misses his three-quarter here. Now the Dayton fans understood the significance of that miss by Drew Lavender. He's just <laughs> filled it up all afternoon long. Yeah, our crew said he's human. How about that? <laughs> Ballon inside, Benny. And good defense by Xavier. Well, Justin Goldman gets his hands on the ball. Crowd well, looking for an offensive foul. Trouble inside. They got three seconds. Violation. When London Warren just stood his ground right there. He did not back London down at all. And Sean Miller pleading his case right there. Former assistant to Herb Sendek. Also to Thad Mata. Because Herb Sendek's had a lot of assistance come yeah. from him. He hires great men of character. Charlie Coles worked for the head coach at Miami of Ohio here locally. Also worked for Herb Sendek. So here we are, about 10 minutes left to play in the game here in Dayton, and Xavier up by eight, and here's a steal from Lavender, and he... Offensive, there's goaltending there. The basket's good, but as I was mentioning there, Xavier up by 10. What is Coach Gregory telling his team right now? I think for one thing, as you look at, at Drew Lavender there, getting the steal, London Warren going up. Dayton has always been able to get back in games by playing defense just like that, like Drew Lavender. And this ball club has to get some steals. They have to get open court. London Warren is so much better playing 94 feet than 47 feet. And that man right there, Brian Roberts, has to get into his head. He's going to take over right now. Brian Roberts leads the team in scoring 18.5 points a game. Second in conference Senior play. He had 13 points on step. Wednesday night against St. Louis. They need him to step up for the Flyers. Now, certainly the, the Xavier defense is focused on Brian Roberts, but Brian Roberts looks like a guy that, that's almost tired. And in a game against Xavier, you can't be tired. You've got to be aggressive. We'll see if he can take over the game. I've seen him do it before. Let's see if he can do it against a quality opponent like Xavier. Send of all up against Lavender. Plummer, oh, he gets the roll. Well, we are at UD Arena on the campus of the University of Dayton where the Flyers are hosting the Xavier Musketeers. Anthony Calhoun alongside with Mark Adams. So glad to have you with us here on ESPNU. A-10 basketball. Xavier Dayton, the robbery continues and the crowd to his feet. Team down by eight points. They're Flyers playing some pretty good defense right now. And right now, I would just do everything I could to make sure Drew Lavender never touches the ball for the rest of the possession and four shots just like that. Roberts thinks about it. And we got a victory by Andre Sandoval. Dayton down by five. Uh, Brian Roberts made that happen with the penetration on the right-hand side and drew the defenders and gave it up for the easy J for three-point land for Sandoval. And Sean Miller has to get a timeout because he can feel Dayton trying to get back in this game here. Now look how open Andre Sandoval was because the entire Xavier defense so focused on Brian Roberts. 
Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Log on to ESPNU.com. This online gateway will connect you to all college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news with an expanded collection of new exclusive material, scores, video, and audio highlights, and much more. Log on to ESPNU.com today. We are college sports. Take a look at the 8-10 standings right now. We talked about this being a big game for Xavier. They're tied with UMass at 10-3. And when you win your conference championship, you get an automatic bid to the NIT. When you win your conference tournament, you go to the NCAA. And UMass and Xavier battling it out. And Dayton, a team six and seven, but 16 victories on the season with a win over Louisville and also Creighton. Dayton, a team that also could get the postseason play. And Anthony, when you've gone sub 500 the previous year, if you can find a way to get the postseason play in the NIT or anything else, that's an accomplishment, and the Dayton fans want to see this team play some more. And good news for Xavier, they do own the tiebreaker against UMass, so that's good news there. So it's a huge game for the Musketeers to try to walk away with the win here in Dayton. Well, a team that's 5-0 right now, they're spanking their opponents by 25-plus points per game during that stretch. The Xavier Musketeers will be evaluated by their last 10 games along with their RPI and their body of work knocking off Villanova, for example. That's a signature win for the Xavier Musketeers. Got a steal. Sandoval headed a foul. Anthony, we asked the question, who would be the third guy to step up? Andre Sandoval bangs the three in the previous possession. He's long, he's lean, and Andre Sandoval is about half mean. Getting the steal, going to the rack, and this crowd explodes. It's good. Boy, do we have a game here in Dayton. The crowd coming to its feet. The Flyers only down by two. A 12-2 Dayton run. Welcome to basketball in the Dayton Decibel Dungeon. We got a college ball game going on. Sandoval with the rebound. Thinks about it to the hoop, lays it in. We're all tied at 52. We've had three ties and three lead changes. Largest lead by 12 by the Musketeers. Here's where the senior laden basketball team, just in case Justin Goldman, have to settle this team down. Cage with a big rebound. And he'll go to the line and he'll shoot two. It has been an unbelievable night. One team has the lead, the other team takes the lead. Plus, over the last eight ball games, he's got to get down the block and do some dirty work to get his offensive rhythm. He's settling for the jump shot. And Brian Roberts has gone from shooter to distributor. As long as he has the ball and he's in attack mode, he's as good as anybody in the Atlantic 10. And the last couple possessions, he made Andre Sandoval a little better. Justin Cage at the line out of Indianapolis, Indiana, was named the Mr. Basketball from the state of Indiana. Field goals, Xavier, 48%, Dayton, 46, three-point field goals. Xavier, 10 21, Dayton, 2 5, and points in the paint. Xavier, 12, Dayton, 28. Well, Justin Cage, the senior, came through. We talked about Goldman Cage need to step up, find a way to score. That time it was Cage on the offensive glass and getting the free throws. Pressure by Xavier. Plummer down low. And all ball there. And he's able to get the timeout. Talk about an effort. Great effort there by Plummer. Now Norman Plummer stayed with it. Was able to get the timeout before he went out of bounds. That's a great hustle play right there. What has been the difference for Dayton right now? Why are they back in this game? The difference has been the X factor. We talked about Brian Roberts. We know who can score. Charles Little, who's been effective throughout this basketball game. Dayton needed a third guy, somebody from their bench, somebody else to score points. And Sean Miller knows that now Andre Sandoval is an offensive threat. For Xavier, they got away from what got him here, got him the lead. Getting the ball in the paint, doing some dirty work playing inside out basketball. And Drew Lavender was a guy who was shooting lights out. And Dayton really 
has been defending a little bit better, but Drew Lavender, every time he's got an open look, he's been able to drain threes. He's been the difference for Xavier, while Dolman has struggled to get it going. Mark, we talked about how this is a big game for Xavier, but it's a big game for Dayton as well, because we're talking about a rivalry. I mean, already, Xavier won the game at Cincinnati here, Cincinnati back in January, so without a doubt, Dayton wants to win this game as well to even it up. Dayton can get to 17 wins tonight with a victory over their rival Xavier. They can get to 7-7 seven and seven in the conference. Roberts with the jumper, and he can't get the roll. And we've got a foul here on Plummer. Well, shot clock running down. You want the ball in Brian Roberts' hands. He's the guy that you want to see making that, taking that shot. Norman Plummer going over the back for the offensive glass work. Third foul on Plummer. Along with Cage for Xavier and Dolman all have three fouls. Inside of Cage is open. There's the double and triple team. And he's got to call the timeout. We've talked about Andre Sandoval, and your thoughts on him, he's been pretty impressive lately, right? Well, he's an athletic kid that can get it going. He's kind of a rhythm-type player. When he makes his first shot, he can become dynamic, especially in the open court. There's the extra pass left wide open as Brian Roberts through the defender. Then he comes back down with some energy defensively with the layup and the foul and plays the crowd a little bit as well. Shoulder slant to the rack next time, 94 feet. That's where Andre Sandoval is best, getting up and down, playing the full slam. And he's getting the job done in the second half where it matters the most. Eight points, no points in the first half, eight points in the second half, three of three shooting. So if you're a smart man, hey, just let him keep the ball in his hands and keep penetrating to the hoop, right? Well, and, and Brian Roberts is the guy that's really, I think, made him better in the half-court situation. When Brian Roberts attacks the basket off the dribble drive, good things happen for the Dayton Flyers. Burrell, haven't heard too much from him, but he's going to drive to the hoop, and he lays it in. But that is just strength right there off the dribble. They tried to bump him off his line to the basket. He'd had none of it, none of it. Lowered his shoulder and got to a rack. And got a traveling violation. So here we are, Xavier up by four. And we've seen different runs throughout this game, especially in the first half. And we're starting to see the second half. How critical is it for the Flyers to try to get a stop here, not to go down by six or maybe seven? the biggest defensive possession of the basketball game for the Dayton Flyers. Down by four, Xavier with the basketball. They're going to try to get it down low again to Brandon Cole. He and Plummer going man-to-man, -man, muscle to muscle. And we got bodies on the ground. And we've got a jump ball. Possession going to uh, Xavier. Well, lace up your skates Saturday night and Sunday afternoon for college hockey on ESPNU. First Saturday at 8 Eastern, the Clarkson Golden Knights face the Quinnipiac Bobcats. Then Sunday at 3, Massachusetts Minutemen take on the Northeastern Huskies. Hockey on ESPNU Saturday and Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Well, Drew Lavender gets a little help off the screen. Dolman from downtown. It's good. Big possessions, seniors came through. Justin Cage on the offensive glass, and Justin Dolman now from three. Coach, you said it was one of the most important possessions. 7-0 run now by Xavier. Dayton needs a basket. Roberts with the ball. Turnover. Cage, Burrell, and he'll go to the line, and he'll shoot two. Experience is winning this basketball game. Stanley Burrell going to the rack, a junior, has played a lot of minutes in his career. Justin Dolman, Justin Cage contributing. On the flip side for Dayton, London Warren, a freshman, two turnovers at a critical moment. Xavier, a team that's known for going on runs and getting the job done in the second half. The first time these two teams played against each other, Dayton started off the game very well, but it was in the second half where Xavier came back to win this game. Well, it's that physical maturity. It's that experience of playing in big games. This is a ball club that won the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament last year on a tremendous four-day run. 
they understand where they are today and what they have to do to get back to the NCAA tournament. Seniors get it. And these seniors of Cage and Dolman are very, very good with Brandon Cole. Coach, three minutes ago, we had a tied ball game. Now, Dayton, with the basket there, finds itself down by seven with 5-12 left to play. Turnover situation here. Tournament, tournament success, I should say. Four A-10 tournament titles in 11 seasons for Xavier. Dolman with a big rebound. He puts it back in. And another offensive glass. One time it's Justin Cage. The next time it's Justin Dolman. Justins are squared today. Ryan Gregory has to call a timeout. Doesn't with this two out of out of hand here for his team. Senior leadership. The shot goes up off the good pass by Drew Lavender. Nobody lays a body on Justin Dolman. That's the player that we expected. Over 18 points per game over the last eight ball games. Justin Dolman getting it done around the paint. We talked about what's at stake here for Xavier. They're 10 and 3, tied with UMass, but they own that tiebreaker against UMass. They can get the 21 and 7, 11 and 3 in the conference. They've won their last five games in a row. They're 41 in the RPI and moving up. This is a team that is working themselves off the bubble. This would be a critical, critical game because the committee also understands how hard it is to win in Dayton, Ohio. They've won 14 out of 15 here. And the fact they were able to go to George Washington this year, winning by 29 Hammer. points. So do you believe they're in the NCAA tournament they win tonight? I don't think they're in. I still think they have some work to do along with about 50 other teams. It's just so bunched up, Anthony. I mean, I love Xavier. I think they've got great talent. I think they're very deserving, but they've got to finish strong. Never leave it in the committee's hands. Listen to Missouri State if you have any questions about that. Okay, you talk about Dolman. He really got on fire the last time they played, especially in the second half. He finished with 24 points, six rebounds, four blocks against the Flyers when they played in Cincinnati last month. Cage turn around and an easy basket there for the senior. Experience, experience, experience. This game's coming down to one basic intangible that you can only develop over time. Take a look at the Missouri Valley RPI rankings and talk about some top teams. Look at this. Southern Illinois, 4 RPI. Creighton, 31. There's Missouri State. Southern Illinois is in. Creighton does not have a signature victory. Missouri State lost in bracket buster to, uh, to Winthrop, who, by the way, is a really good basketball team under Greg Marshall. So, you know what? Again, a lot of work to be done, even for those Missouri Valley teams. Missouri State was number 21 RPI last year and did not make the NCAA tournament. Dolman picking up his fourth foul for Xavier, so we'll watch that as well. In fact, I like Bradley a little bit better than I do. Plus, some good basketball now. Creighton or Missouri State right now with where they're, they've been playing. Xavier's going to use some shot clock here. They're looking for Stanley Burrell because he stretches the defense and gives him a pass inside just like that. So here we go. Xavier up 65 to 55. Much more coverage here from the Much more. Log on to ESPNU.com today. We are college sports. Mark, they say defense wins games, wins championships. If you're Dayton, you're not getting the job done, though, here in the second half in the defensive end. And Dayton needs to get steals or miss shots right there. Dayton is last in the conference in steals per game. They average under five steals per game. They need about five steals in the last four minutes to make a serious run here. Roberts with the layups. Down by eight. 330 left to play. Dayton, not a trapping type team. They're a team that plays you straight up man to man. That's the reason for them not being a steel open court type team typically. We've seen Dayton go on a run, many runs throughout this game. Can they come back with 3.15 left to play here? John Xavier's going to run shot clock every single possession now. And that's a bad foul with 11 Clark seconds left on the shot Sandoval clock right there by Andre Sandoval. Got physical down low with Justin Cage. With the shot clock that low, that's the last thing that you want is a foul. 
You just given up 20 seconds in the game clock and shot clock, and then foul and put them on the line for an opportunity to score. And we're in the bonus situation now, and if there's a team you do not want to put at the foul line, well, beg your pardon. I was going to say Xavier, but they come up with a big rebound there. A very good free throw shooting team for Xavier, shooting over 73% as a team. Now, Norman Plummer doesn't block off, and Brandon Cole comes up with the offensive rebound. So a chance for Xavier to work off some more time off the clock. Brandon Cole, big dunk by Cole. Well, it's good recognition right there by Xavier as Cole's matched up with Andre Sandoval, a mismatch, and Brandon Cole too strong, too athletic, too good. Flyers in the basket, Little in the lane. Follows a shot and puts it back in. Is that an assist? Yeah. Like to himself? Exactly you want to so call it's like it he put it up there just to go get it again and make it look better. That's right. Down by eight. When a lot of clock per possession for Xavier as Dayton settling into their man-to-man. -man. You think this is a veteran team playing against Dayton or what? Look at the ball control here. Lavender, nine seconds on the shot clock. Cage. Some trouble. And shot clock violation. But the good news for Xavier, they just burned 35 seconds. This is Xavier, Justin for Derek Brown. So if you're Dayton, what do you have to do to try to get this game close to somehow try to put this game into overtime if you can? 148 left to play. Go to your quick shot offense right now on Brian Gregory calling the play. He wants Brian Roberts with the ball, penetrate with it with the shot. There it is. And he gets the basket and the foul. Charles Little, Dayton needs a basket, puts it up. Hey, listen, I'll just go back. I'm better than everybody else around the rim. Charles Little, and then Brian Roberts takes the ball to the basket and draws the foul. Now Dayton can score another point with no close time running off the clock. That play only took eight seconds to score. Good quick offense by Dayton. So the crowd coming to its feet. Xavier up by five. 138 left to play. And Dayton with a little bit of full court pressure, but no trap. Xavier with two timeouts. Dayton with one. Tolman, the leader, in the lane, turn around, and we've got a foul. And the crowd not happy about that call. Charles Little matched up. Brian Gregory doesn't like the call either. Justin Dillman at the line, shooting two. There you see Charles Little moving his feet. Wow. I didn't see that foul. That's Did a, you? That's a tough call. That's a tough that's call. That's a tough call. Dillman at the line, great free throw shooter. 78% from the foul line. In for the Flyers, Jimmy Binney from Northern Still a six-point game. Don't have to settle for the three ball. If you're going to get a three, it's got to be off a penetration of pitch or something down the low block for inside out. I don't like a three shot coming off the dribble in this situation. You better attack the basket, see what the defense does, take what the defense gives you. And he gets the second one to go. In for Xavier, Derek Brown. For Derek Justin Brown Dolman. back in the game for Xavier. He'll replace Dolman. Well, and that's a counter type of defensive substitution for a little bit more quickness because Dayton has basically four guards on the floor. Roberts just penetrating every time. Vinny for three. And that's a good look. Roberts got penetration, drew the defender. Jimmy Vinny has shot 43% from three after an 0 for 14 start in the season. That's a good look for Dayton. They don't make it. Now Dayton in full court man-to-man. -man. High risk, high reward defense. A lot of confusion as to yeah. who's guarding who here. Sandoval backs off because they don't want to give up the home run deep. Boy, and Brandon Cole, if he would have sprinted, he would have been open deep. There's your trap. And we've got a traveling 
on Burrell. Burrell wanted a foul call. But the officials say travel traveling here. Well, Stanley Burrell drug his pivot foot right there as London Warren was in hot pursuit of the double team. And Stanley Burrell recognized that, tried to stop, but slid through. And Xavier's going to zone right here to switch up defense to force Dayton out of their rhythm offensively. Then he had a chance at it. Roberts were way outside. And the zone worked. It tricked up Dayton, and Dayton took the long force jump shot. That's a great coaching move by Sean Miller. And Lavender will go to the line. Foul on Roberts. And here we are, 52.1 seconds left to play here in Dayton. And Xavier up by seven, 69 to 62. And Anthony, sometimes coaching matters. It mattered on that possession. Sean Miller's played man-to-man -man all night long, switches up the 1-2-2 two, two zone. So the first one's good. 70 to 62, Xavier on top, 52.1 seconds left to play, and Lavender gets the second one to go, so Xavier up by nine now, 71 to 62. 45 seconds left to play here in Dayton. They need a basket quick. Uh, Sandoval gets the basket, so they'll call timeout. Xavier down, 71 to 64. 44.6 left to play here in Dayton. Mark, I want to ask you about the fact that Xavier, here they are going up against Dayton. They knew this is a team that's 14-1 here at home, but the way they've been able to perform, if you're Sean Miller, you got to be impressed with your team to come in here and get, looks like they're going to get a win tonight. I'm impressed with Xavier over the entire second half of the season. They've won their last five games by an average of 25 points. And to come into Dayton, now Monty Scott's injured, so this is a, a wounded Dayton basketball team. But anytime you come to Dayton and win for Xavier, that's a tremendous victory and also one the committee will look at very favorably. Everybody understands how difficult it is to win here in Dayton, Ohio. Let's take a look at the reset. Eight fouls for Xavier, nine for Dayton. No more timeouts for the Flyers. Xavier with two timeouts remaining here in the game. You know, we talked about the resume for Xavier. Look at the team. Anybody's in yet, Anthony. It's still it's still February with conference tournaments to come. And there are so many teams. I mean, I've, I've sit down and I look at the Missouri Valley, for example. I look at the Atlantic 10. You know, right now, Xavier is the, I'll tell you this. Xavier is the only team in the Atlantic 10 that would get possibly an at-large berth as a second team. I don't think any other Atlantic 10 team right now would get a berth as an at-large team if they don't win the conference championship. And don't forget, coming up right after this game, college hockey for you as well, right here on ESDNU. You know, I keep thinking about the Missouri states of the world. 21 RPI and don't make the tournament last year. 34 RPI the year before that and don't make the tournament. I like Xavier. I think they're a great ball club. But I also think they've got to finish strong because you've got other people making decisions for you in that room. And the Cisco player of the game tonight, why not? Drew Lavender, what an impressive performance tonight. 23 points. Five of seven from behind the arc. An outstanding night for the point guard. He's really been the difference for the Xavier basketball team. He's making big plays. He's distributing the ball. He's great in the open court. He bangs threes. 47% from three. He's short in stature, but he's got a huge heart and a big game. Josh if Xavier can make its way into the NCAA tournament, what do you think they can do? I would never want to play Xavier. No way I want to play these guys because it's a senior-laden basketball team, very well coached. Defensively, they're tough to score on. Justin Dolman has size. He can shoot over defenders. Lavender has quickness. Stanley Burrell can explode offensively. Justin Cage, a great defender. Brandon Cole gives him a post defender. Those are a lot of ingredients that if I'm UCLA or Kansas or anybody else, I don't want to see Xavier playing me in the NCAA tournament. Fouls on Larry Sandoval, his fifth. And the fouls on Sandoval, and that's his fifth personal foul, so he is done for the night. 
Well, he gave this team really a big boost off the bench. A couple steals, bang the three. Some layups to get this crowd into it. So next up for Xavier, they'll take on St. Joseph's on senior night on Wednesday. So I know the folks in Cincinnati will look forward to that game. On well, Phil Martelli and Pat Kalathis, another big guard in this league. And Phil Martelli, one of the best X's and O's guys in the country. And speaking of great coaches, Sean Miller has done just a tremendous job taking over this program after Thad Mata went to Ohio State. You know, one of the first calls I got was Sean Miller when he got named the head basketball coach at Xavier. I was in my office, and two hours after he was named, he called me and said, Mark, listen, I want to invite you down. I want you to see my team. You're invited to practice. Any access you need for Xavier University basketball, you've got full access of any game you ever do. That's a class gentleman, and I appreciated him reaching out in that way. Yeah, it was a pleasure spending some time today with Coach Miller. One thing I respect most about him is that he told his team, hey, we don't take any game lightly. Everybody's coming after our team, and they proved that today. They got the job done here against their arch rival, the Flyers of Dayton. 27 points tonight for Lavender. Talk about a point guard stepping up for his team. Yeah, and also remember, when this team, when this game was in doubt, Justin Dolman, Justin Cage came up with some big offensive rebounds. Jimmy Penny for three. Benny hits the three, but it's a little bit too late for the Flyers. A great win for Xavier on the road here today. So what a special win tonight for Sean Miller and his Xavier basketball team, uh, beating his arch rival here in Dayton, 75 to 67. And the Dayton Flyers now have to regroup, but Xavier looks like a bright horizon. So once again, our final score, 75 to 67 for Mark Adams and our entire ESPNU crew. I'm Anthony Calhoun. Coming up next on ESPNU, college hockey, Clarkson against Quinnipiac. More information, log on to ESPNU.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in collegiate athletics.